Hello, my name is Nick, and welcome to my very first system build log. This is going to be a Media Center PC in this little slimline 720p case from XION, Zion, company that I still don't know how to pronounce her name. It's going to have an AMD uh, A series APU that is a Richland APU. We're going to have some crucial ballistics RAM all on this motherboard from MSI which is the FM2A75MAE35. And I've done uh, unboxings and overviews of all these products already, so you can check those out in my channel. And what I want to do now is build the system on a motherboard box, even though I have a case. The reason that I'm going to build, on, build it on the box first is because you don't want to get everything installed into your case, right? You finish the system and it's gorgeous. And the first time you power it on, it does not work. I'm building it on the motherboard box, which is a nice non-conductive surface, so that I can test it without, uh, with minimal trouble if we do have a part that's malfunctioning or dead. So, without further ado, let's get started. The very first step in any electronics build guide of working with electronics thing is static protection, or ESD protection. This is an anti-static wrist strap. You should always wear one. It will keep you from zapping and killing your expensive components. You clip this onto something that's electrically grounded, like a power supply that's plugged into the wall, or even the case, if the power supply is installed and plugged into the wall. And that will keep your components safe during your build. I'm going to wear it on my ankle. So I'm going to put it on right now. I'm safely grounded to... 120 volts of AC power. No, please don't stick it in an outlet. Just ground yourself. <laughs> because installing the APU is such an important step, I will provide a link for those of you who are interested to my proper APU installation guide. And for this video, we'll just speed right through it. There's one last thing that we need to do for this particular board, and that is plug in our memory module. If I can get it out of the plastic sarcophagus, then we'll be good to go. To start, for the purpose of debugging, you only need to plug in one memory module. You don't need to plug in two. We'll start with one, make sure that it works with one before we plug in any more. This particular build only has one memory module. I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. There are two clips on either side of the slot. You fold those clips back, they'll click open, and line the module up with the little slots and let it slide down in. Lining up that notch on the bottom of the memory module with the notch in the slot. You shouldn't really have to force it at all. It'll click into place easily, just like that, and your memory is now installed. What we're going to do now is plug in a mouse and a keyboard, and we're going to put power to the motherboard, and we will test it and make sure that it boots. All right, I've plugged in the 4-pin CPU power connector, and now I have the 24-pin connector. Each one of these connections is keyed in a different shape, and it'll only fit one way, and that is the right way. We'll line the clip up with the little notch on the 24-pin connector on the motherboard. And in we go. We've already plugged in the monitor. Our power connections are all made. So now I will plug in the CP, yeah, the power supply, not the CPU. And we'll be good to go. Normally, you turn on the system with a power button. We don't have a power button. What we need to do is jump the power button header. To find out which header on the motherboard, which two pins, controls your main power, you can look in your motherboard manual. I've already checked on that, and I'm going to jump them with a screwdriver. And it's running. This is the first time that I have uh, tested this. 
There we go. CPU or memory changed. Press F1 to run setup, F2 to load default values and continue. I did not bother to plug in a monster keyboard, so I cannot do that. But I know that the system boots. We have a good CPU, in this case an APU, good RAM, and good motherboard. At least good enough to get us booted. It might require further validation to make certain that they're all good, but at this point I am satisfied and I feel comfortable installing the system in the case. So that'll be the next step. All right, so we have a good computer system ready to be installed in the case. So the first thing that we'll do is get all of the wiring. Hmm. It's going to be a challenge. All of the wiring out of the way. And I will just hold that. It's not going to stay. It's not going to stay out of the way. But, uh, oh, look at it. It stayed. See? It's making me look bad. First thing to do. I've forgotten to do this before, but uh, we need to install the IO shield, which won't come out of the bag, but now it's out of the bag. There it is. We need to get this guy installed and happy and super duper. Right. I have forgotten to install these before, and it's just been a mess. The build is finished. I look at it. I'm satisfied. And I turn it around. Oh, no. Yeah, I forgot to install the IO shield. I have to do it all over again. They have just little little ridges on the sides, and they punch right into the back. Make sure that you are using the proper orientation, and then clip it all in. Make sure that it's all the way in. If you're wondering just exactly, there's a piece of bag in there. If you're wondering exactly what way that goes in there, you can take your motherboard, or you can read the manual, but I prefer to do it the stupid way. Uh, take your motherboard and just compare it and look at it as it's going to be sitting in the case and make sure all the holes match up and then you're good to go. Now, as we prepare to install the motherboard in the case, we see we make a note of our screw holes all around the motherboard for fastening the motherboard to the chassis and inside of this particular chassis we have some corresponding standoffs that are non-removable so we don't have to worry about them. And if you do have removable standoffs, you may need to modify the positioning of the standoffs for the motherboard that you're using to make sure you don't have an extra standoff that's in the wrong place which could destroy your motherboard because it could it could scrape against the back of the board and damage the traces um, check with your case manual and you will know whether or not you need to worry about your standoffs and what you need to do there it varies uh, based on every case so since we don't have to worry about our standoffs I'm going to very carefully slide the motherboard into position to avoid all the wiring. Being very careful not to scrape the motherboard along the side of the case or anything like that, which could damage the board or even destroy it. I'm going to have the board set in there. I've lined up the ports with the IO shield, and I'll take my trusty screwdriver and find a trusty screw, which is the type of screw they want me to use. And again, just hold the motherboard in position over the screw holes. Are you looking? <laughs> Did you forget? And carefully fasten the screw in. You don't really have to go tight at all, especially right now. I'm not tightening the screws down. I'm just putting all the screws in so we can make sure that the motherboard stays lined up with this could be a challenge to make sure that the motherboard stays lined up properly inside the case so that's what I'm doing right now now I've gotten all of the screws in and I've gotten the motherboard lined up so now what I'm going to do is just go around the case and tighten the screws down very lightly this does not have to be done super tight you don't want to damage the motherboard in any way. Really, just very light. I can't emphasize that enough. I've had so many people who damaged their motherboard by fastening down those screws a little bit too tight. You're not installing a component into a fighter jet. It doesn't need to be that tight. Now, oops. The next step, now that we're all installed, is to get the wiring 
installed, which is always fun. For this particular system, we have a Samsung 840 Evo solid state drive, an excellent solid state drive, which I also have a review of on my channel. And in this particular case, in order to get at the area that will hold our storage, you have to remove a few screws on the front panel and then push this. Come on, homie. Come on there, buddy. Come here. There. Push that backwards, and it lifts right up and out. And I'll set that aside for now. And now we can take a better look at that 300 watt power supply and the area of the case where we are going to put the 840 Evo. We have an included mounting bracket, and we are going to mount the drive right there. All right, I found the screw that fit, and now we have fixed the mounting adapter to the SSD, and we've got it nice and snug, and the SSD is ready to go into the case where it will sit right in there. Now included, we have our right angle SATA cables, which are a little bit incompatible with the way that they have the drive mounted. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put the right angle connector into the motherboard and use the straight connector to hook up the SSD, which is tangled in all of these wires that are very temperamental to do. Let me give that another snug. So now we are ready, finally, to anchor the SSD in there. So I have our Blu-ray drive now, and we will slide it right into the caddy, and line it up reasonably well, and find where I put my screwdriver. I've got a little bit of a mess going on here. And I'll tell you guys that it's very important to practice cleanliness. All right, I've got everything installed. You can see here that I've changed out the fan. I didn't like the Molex fan, so we switched to a fan that uses a three-pin fan header so that we can have control of the fan speed from software and within the UEFI. Up here I have my Blu-ray drive plugged in and the SSD. This is the Blu-ray drive right here. All of the wiring is up in front between the uh, SSD and the power supply so as not to block the ventilation fan for the power supply. And the only thing left to do now is to plug in the front panel headers. So let's do that. We'll start out with this one right here. You have a choice between HD audio and AC97. Unless you have a case that specifies anymore nowadays you use HD audio. And I read the manual and I checked up on this and I know for a fact that the audio header is right here in the corner. If I can reach it, you guys probably can't even see. I can't even get it plugged in. It's too hard. Nope, I did it. I did it. Give me a gold star. So we'll tuck that up out of the way now so that we can install one of the USBs. And we'll plug that into USB number two. And here we have another USB. Da, 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 da. If I can get it in there, this is a very tight case to work in. I can't say that it's the most fun that I've ever had building a system, but it's certainly fun. And I, I actually uh, misled you. I already have the front panel headers plugged in right down there. So the last thing I have to do is line up the little notch right here on this big old USB 3 connector with the notch on the USB 3 header. And 
that is now plugged in. It's not a very tight fit on this particular motherboard. Try to get that routed in such a way that I don't have big gobs of wires sticking out. And there we go. The cable management is not super beautiful, but the cables are down, out of the way, and not obstructing airflow. And that will enable us to achieve maximum cooling performance with the hardware that we have in here. So I'll get this thing sealed up and get the front panel back on. And we'll boot it up and install Windows. And yeah, let's do it. You didn't see that. The system is finished. It is alive. It is glowing and happy. The fan's running a little bit loud. I'm going to have to turn that down. But here we are in the UEFI. Uh, da -da -da -da. I do want to boot to the CD because I will need that later. Mm. These are the power saving modes. This is overclocked. This is the OC Genie 2 button. You click that, it automatically overclocks the system. And over here is Eco mode to lower power consumption. I'm going to leave it in standard mode. Our Blu-ray drive registers on SATA 1. Our SSD registered is on SATA port 2. As far as the system information goes, it shows that we have an AMD A6 6400K APU. And it shows that it's running at the rated frequency. Our DRAM is running at the rated frequency and does report the correct size. So, I think that's all for this video. I'm not going to do any overclocking on this system. But, yeah. Who is this system for? It's not It's not a super high-end rig. It's not something that's going to keep a video editor happy or some really high-end power users. It is an entry-level system with some very good specs for the money. This is a, a system that's come in at a price point under $500, and for that you're getting a dual-core CPU, AMD APU, the 6400K to be precise, with some very good onboard graphics, the ability to expand to a dedicated graphics card and throw it into Crossfire if you wanted to. You have a lot of expandability on the motherboard. You have Windows 7. You got a very, very snappy system with that Samsung SSD. And you're really getting a great all-around experience for the price. Um, I think this is great for anybody who wants to do entry-level gaming, or you know, just looking for an entry-level computer, this is a great option. This particular machine is going to be a Media Center PC, so it'll run sideways, nice and quiet, nice and cool inside of somebody's Media Center, and I think it's a great option for that, too. So, thank you guys for checking out this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that uh, I didn't make too much of a fool of myself with this build blog, and thumbs up the video, like it, or dislike it or leave me a comment and tell me that I said thumbs up instead of like because I must be a communist. <laughs>